Are you tired of waiting for your manifestations to come true? Well, I have great news for you. There's a new tool that can help you manifest 100 times faster. It's called the 20 word script and it's already changing lives. This script alters your DNA, allowing you to tap into the power of the universe and manifest your desires with ease. Check out the link in the description below to learn more and get your hands on this life-changing tool today. Now let's get to our session. During the past several years, I've been so strongly attracted to studying intention that I've read hundreds of books by psychological, sociological, and spiritual writers, ancient and modern scholars, and academic researchers. My research reveals a fairly common definition of intention as a strong purpose or aim, accompanied by a determination to produce a desired result. People driven by intention are described as having a strong will that won't permit anything to interfere with achieving their inner desire. I imagine a sort of pit bull kind of resolve or determination. If you're one of those people with a never give up attitude combined with an internal picture that propels you toward fulfilling your dreams, you fit this description of someone with intention. You are, most likely, a super achiever and probably proud of your ability to recognize and take advantage of opportunities that arise. For many years, I've held a similar belief about intention. In fact, I've written and spoken often about the power of intention being just what I've described above. Over the past quarter of a century, however, I've felt a shift in my thinking from a purely psychological or personal growth emphasis toward a spiritual orientation where healing, creating miracles, manifesting, and making a connection to divine intelligence are genuine possibilities. This hasn't been a deliberate attempt to disengage from my academic and professional background, but rather a natural evolution that's been unfolding as I began to make more conscious contact with spirit. My writing now emphasizes my belief that we can find spiritual solutions to problems by living at higher levels and calling upon faster energies. In my mind, intention is now something much greater than a determined ego or individual will. It's something almost totally opposite. Perhaps this comes from shedding many levels of ego in my own life, but I also feel the strong influence of two sentences I read in a book by Carlos Castaneda. In my writing life, I've often come across something in a book that starts a thought germinating in me that ultimately compels me to write a new book. At any rate, I read these two sentences in Castaneda's final book, The Active Side of Infinity, while I was waiting to have a cardiac procedure to open one clogged artery leading into my heart that had caused a mild heart attack. Castaneda's words were, quote, Intent is a force that exists in the universe. When sorcerers, that is, those who live of the source, beckon intent, it comes to them and sets up a path for attainment, which means that sorcerers always accomplish what they set out to do." Unquote. When I read those two sentences, I was stunned by the insight and clarity it gave me about the power of intention. Imagine that intention is not something you do, but rather a force that exists in the universe as an invisible field of energy. I had never even considered intention in this way before reading Castaneda's words. I wrote those two sentences down, and then I had them printed on a card and laminated. I carried the laminated card with me into the catheter lab for my minor surgical procedure. And as soon as I could, I began talking about the power of intention to anyone who would listen. I made intention a part of every speech I gave. I immersed myself in this idea to use it, not only for my own healing, but to help others use the power of intention to carry them where they're fully equipped to go. I had experienced what is called satori, or instant awakening, and was intent on offering this insight to others. It had become clear to me that accessing the power of intention relieved so much of the seemingly impossible work of striving to fulfill desires by sheer force of will. Since that defining moment, I've thought of the power of intention in virtually all of my waking hours, and books, articles, conversations, telephone calls, items arriving in my mailbox, and arbitrary works I might be looking at in a bookstore all seem to conspire to keep me on this path. So here it is, The Power of Intention. I hope this book will help you view intention in a new way and also to make use of it in a manner that leads you to define yourself as Patanjali suggested more than 20 centuries ago. Dormant forces, faculties, and talents come alive and you discover yourself to be a greater person by far than you ever dreamed yourself to be. Patanjali's two words, dormant forces, kick-started me in the direction of writing about intention. 
Patanjali was referring to forces that appear to be either non-existent or dead, and he was referring to the powerful energy a person feels when inspired. If you've ever felt inspired by a purpose or calling, you know the feeling of spirit working through you. Inspired is our word for inspirited. I've thought long and hard about the idea of being able to access seemingly dormant forces to assist me at key times in my life to achieve an inner burning desire. What are these forces? Where are they located? Who gets to use them? Who's denied access? And why? Questions like these have propelled me to research and write this book and subsequently arrive at a totally new perspective on intention. At this point, as I'm writing about my excitement of realizing a long obscured truth, I know that intention is a force that we all have within us. Intention is a field of energy that flows invisibly beyond the reach of our normal everyday habitual patterns. It's there even before our actual conception. We have the means to attract this energy to us and experience life in an exciting new way. The meaning of omnipresent intention. Try imagining a force that's everywhere. There's no place that you can go where it isn't. It can't be divided and is present in everything you see or touch. Now extend your awareness of this infinite field of energy beyond the world of form and boundaries. This infinite and visible force is everywhere, so it's in both the physical and the non-physical. Your physical body is one part of your totality emanating from this energy. At the instant of conception, intention sets in motion how your physical form will appear and how your growing and aging process will unfold. It also sets in motion your non-physical aspects, including your emotions, thoughts, and disposition. In this instance, intention is infinite potential, activating your physical and non-physical appearance on Earth. You formed out of this omnipresent to become present in time and space. Because it's omnipresent, this energy field of intent is accessible to you after your physical arrival here on Earth. The only way you deactivate this dormant force is by believing that you're separate from it. Activating intention means rejoining your source and becoming a modern-day sorcerer. Being a sorcerer means attaining the level of awareness where previously inconceivable things are available. As Carlos Castaneda explained, the task of sorcerers was to face infinity or intention, and they plunged into it daily as a fisherman plunges into the sea. Intention is a power that's present everywhere as a field of energy. It isn't limited to physical development. It's the source of non-physical development as well. This field of intention is here, now, and available to you. When you activate it, you begin to feel purpose in your life, and you'll be guided by your infinite self. As you make your metaphorical bow to this power, recognize that you're bowing to yourself. The all-pervading energy of intention pulses through you toward your potential or a purposeful life. How you came to experience yourself as disconnected from intention. If there's an omnipresent power of intention that's not only within me, but in everything and everyone, then we're connected by this all-pervading source to everything and everyone, and to what we'd like to be, and what we'd like to have, and what we want to achieve, and to everything in the universe that will assist us. All that's required is realigning ourselves and activating intention. But how did we get disconnected in the first place? How did we lose our natural ability to connect? Lions, fish, and birds, they don't get disconnected. The animal, vegetable, and mineral worlds are always connected to their source. They don't question their intention. We humans, however, with our capability for presumably higher brain functions, have something we refer to as ego, which is an idea that we construct about who and what we are. Ego is made of six primary ingredients that account for how we experience ourselves as disconnected. By allowing ego to determine your life path, you deactivate the power of intention. Briefly, here are the six ego beliefs. I've written more extensively about them in several of my previous books, most notably, Your Sacred Self. One, I am what I have. That is, my possessions define me. Two, I am what I do. That is, my achievements define me. Three, I am what others think of me. That is, my reputation defines me. Four, I am separate from everyone. That is, my body defines me as alone. Five, I am separate from all that is missing in my life. That is, my life space is disconnected from my desires. Six, 
I am separate from God. My life depends on God's assessment of my worthiness. No matter how hard you try, intention can't be accessed through the ego. So take some time to recognize and readjust any or all of those six beliefs. When the supremacy of ego is weakened in your life, you can seek intention and maximize your potential. There are four steps to intention. Activating your power of intention is a process of connecting with your natural self and letting go of total ego identification. The process takes place in the following four stages. One, discipline. This is the first stage. Learning a new task requires training your body to perform as your thoughts desire. So eliminating ego identification doesn't mean disconnecting from your relationship with your body, but rather training your body to activate those desires. You do that with practice, exercise, non-toxic habits, healthy foods, and so on. Two, wisdom is the second stage. Wisdom, combined with discipline, fosters your ability to focus and be patient as you harmonize your thoughts, your intellect, and your feelings with the work of your body. We send our children off to school telling them, be disciplined and use your head. And then we call this an education, but it falls far short of mastery. Three, the third stage is love. After disciplining the body with wisdom and intellectually studying a task, this process of mastery involves loving what you do and doing what you love. In the world of sales, I call it falling in love with what you're offering and then selling your love or enthusiasm to potential customers. When learning to play tennis, it involves practicing all of the strokes while studying strategies for playing the game. It also involves enjoying the feeling of hitting the ball and being on the tennis court and everything else about the game. And the final stage for surrender. This is the place of intention. This is where your body and your mind aren't running the show and you move into intent. You relax. You allow yourself to be carried by the same power that turns acorns into trees, blossoms into apples, and microscopic dots into human beings. When you surrender, you lighten up and can consult with your infinite soul. Then the power of intention becomes available to take you wherever you feel destined to go. All of this talk of intention and surrender may cause you to question where your free will fits in. You might be inclined to conclude that free will is non-existent or that you become whatever your program dictates. So let's just take a look at your will and how it fits into this new you of intention. As you listen to the next two sections, please keep an open mind, even if what you hear conflicts with what you believed all of your life. Intention and your free will are paradoxical. A paradox is seemingly absurd or a contradictory statement, even if well-founded. Intention and free will certainly qualify as being paradoxical. They conflict with many a preconceived notion of what's reasonable or possible. How can you possess free will and also have intention shaping your body and your potential? You confuse this dichotomy by choosing to believe in the infinity of intention and in your capacity to exercise free will. You know how to think rationally about the rules of cause and effect, so try your intellect out on this. Obviously, it's impossible to have two infinites, for then neither would be infinite. Each would be limited by the other. You can't divide infinite into parts. Essentially, infinite is unity, continuity, or oneness, like the air in your home. Where does the air in your kitchen stop and the air in your living room begin? Where does the air inside your home stop and the air outside start? How about the air you breathe in and out? Air may be the closest we can come to understanding the infinite, universal, omnipresent spirit. Somehow, you must travel in thought beyond the idea of your individual existence to the idea of a unity of universal being, and then beyond this to the idea of a universal energy. When you think of part of a whole being in one place and part in another, you've lost the idea of unity. And, keeping an open mind as I beseech you to do earlier, get this. At any moment in time, all spirit is concentrated at the point where you focus your own attention. Therefore, you can consolidate all creative energy at a given moment in time. This is called your free will at work. Your mind and your thoughts are also thoughts of the divine mind. Universal spirit is in your thoughts and in your free will. When you shift your thoughts from spirit to ego, you seem to lose contact with the power of intention. Your free will can either move with universal spirit and its unfolding or away from it toward ego dominance. As it moves away from spirit, life appears to be a struggle. Slower energies flow through you 
and you may feel hopeless and helpless and lost. You can use your free will to rejoin higher, faster energies. The truth is that we do not create anything alone. We are all creatures with God. Our free will combines and redistributes what's already created. You choose. Free will means that you have the choice to connect to spirit or not. So the answer to the question, do I have a free will? And is intention working with me as an all-pervasive universal force? Is yes. Can you live with this paradox? If you think about it, you live with a paradox in every moment of your existence. At the same exact instant that you're a body with beginnings and ends, with boundaries and a definition in time and space, you're also simultaneously an invisible, formless, unlimited thinking and feeling being, a ghost in the machine, if you will. Which are you? Matter or essence? Physical or metaphysical? Form or spirit? The answer is both, even though they appear to be opposites. Do you have a free will? And are you a part of the destiny of intention? The answer is yes. Fuse this dichotomy, blend the opposites, and live with both of these beliefs. Begin the process of allowing spirit to work with you and link up to the field of intention. Combining free will with intention. In mathematics, two angles that are said to coincide fit together perfectly. The word coincidence does not describe luck or mistakes. It describes that which fits together perfectly. By combining free will with intention, you harmonize with universal mind. Rather than operating in your own mind outside of this force called intention, your goal may very well be, as you listen to this program, to work at being in harmony at all times with intention. When life appears to be... supposedly wrong people show up or when you slip up and return to old self-defeating habits recognize the signs that you're out of harmony with intention you can and will reconnect in a way that will bring you into alignment with your own purpose for example when I write I open myself to the possibilities of universal spirit and my own individual thoughts collaborating with fate to produce a helpful insightful program Here's an example of how intention collaborates with life circumstances to produce what we need. Recently, my 19-year-old daughter, Summer, told me that she'd quit her temporary job as a restaurant hostess and wasn't sure what she wanted to do before resuming her college studies. I asked her what made her feel most purposeful and happy, and she said it was teaching horseback riding to young children. But she refused to return to the old barn where she'd worked a year before because she really felt unappreciated, overworked, and underpaid. I was over.
Ron Maui writing the very first chapter on a whole new perspective on intention when we had this telephone conversation. I launched into my intention as a force in the universe spiel and told my daughter that she needed to realign her thoughts and so on. Open up to receiving the assistance you desire, I told her. Trust in intention. It exists for you. Stay alert and be willing to accept any guidance that comes your way. Stay in vibrational harmony with the all-providing source. The next day, at the very moment I was searching for an example of intention to put into this chapter, the telephone rang. And here it was, Summer, bubbling with enthusiasm. You're not going to believe this, Dad, she says. On second thought, I'm sure you will believe it. Remember yesterday how you told me to be open to intention? Well, I was skeptical, even thinking, that's just my weird dad, but I decided to try it. Then I saw a sign on a telephone pole that said, Horseback Riding Lessons, and there was a telephone number. I wrote the number down, and I just called it. And the woman who answered told me that she needed to hire someone she could trust to do trail rides with young kids. She pays exactly double what I was making at the restaurant. I'm going out to see her tomorrow. Isn't that cool? Cool? Hell yes, it's cool. Here I am writing a book, looking for a good example, and it arrives in the form of help I was attempting to offer the day before to my daughter. Two for the price of one, if you will. I'll close this section with words from Aldous Huxley, one of my favorite authors. The spiritual journey does not consist in arriving at a new destination where a person gains what he did not have or becomes what he is not. It consists in the dissipation of one's own ignorance concerning one's self and life and the gradual growth of that understanding which begins the spiritual awakening. Thank you for joining our session today. If you're ready to take your manifestation game to the next level, Head over to the link in the description and get your own copy of the script today to unlock the power of the universe and manifest your dreams with ease.